All right, Squeaks, we're all set. Do you have your animals picked out? Oh, good. Oh, hi there. Squeaks and I were just getting ready to play a couple rounds of our favorite game. Guess that animal. We've each picked a few secret animals, and we're going to take turns giving each other clues to see if we can guess what they are. Then we watch a video to learn more about them. I'll start and show you how it works. Okay, Squeaks, my first animal has big claws on its front feet, a big tail that kind of looks like a worm, and it has lots of armor on its back. Guess that animal. Ooh, you are right, Squeaks. Some insects do have armor, but he can't think of any with a tail that looks like a worm. Ooh, and the claws make him think that it might be a lizard or a mammal. That's right, Squeaks. Great job. My animal was the nine-banded armadillo. Now, let's learn more about them and all kinds of other armadillos. Animals come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Some are big and furry, others can be small and slimy, and some even have a full suit of armor, like our friend Gaia the armadillo. Armadillos look a little like a mouse or a rabbit, but there's something that makes them really special. They're covered in hard, bony armor on their backs, heads, and sometimes their tails. You're right, armadillos do look really cool, Squeaks. And their armor is more than just cool looking. It also has an important job, protecting the armadillo from anything that might want to eat it, what we call predators. There are over 20 species or types of armadillo, which live in different parts of South America, Central America, and some places in North America. Some species of armadillo are huge, like this giant armadillo. It can be around a meter or three feet long. That's about as long as a three-year-old human is tall. Other armadillos, like the pink fairy armadillo, are tiny. They're about 10 centimeters or four inches long. They're so small that I could fit one in the palm of my hand, and yes, their armor is pink. Gaia is a southern three-banded armadillo, which are a little bigger, about 25 centimeters or 10 inches, around as long as a piece of paper. But even though there are lots of different kinds of armadillos, they all have a few things in common. First, they all have their bony armor to keep them safe. Things like skin and fur are pretty soft, so a lot of small animals can be in big trouble if predators that want to eat them get too close. That's why they tend to run away and hide. But armadillos have an added layer of protection to keep themselves safe. That's right, Squeaks, they have their special armor. Armadillo's backs are covered in thick plates of bone with a layer of tough, small scales on the outside. The scales are made of the same stuff that makes our fingernails. And the scales have a fun name. They're called scoots. With all those scoots covering them, armadillos kind of look like little knights wearing suits of armor. That armor acts like a shield, keeping the armadillo's soft underside safe if a predator tries to bite it. Three-banded armadillos like Gaia can eat even curl all the way up into a little armored ball. That would be pretty hard to bite. Another thing all armadillos do is sleep underground because it keeps them cooler when it's hot out and because it's safer. Even for an animal with awesome armor, it isn't always safe to sleep out in the open. If an armadillo is asleep, it might not notice a predator sneaking up on it. So armadillos sleep underground in a home called a burrow. Some armadillos use burrows made by other animals while some make their own. To make a burrow, they use their big front claws to dig through the dirt, creating a long tunnel that leads down to a bigger room. Some armadillos will also make extra tunnels leading out of the burrow, so they have lots of choices for how to get in and out. Armadillos spend a lot of time working on their burrow because they need them to be a great space for safe sleeping. And they need to sleep a lot up to 16 hours a day. Once they've gotten enough rest, armadillos crawl back up above the ground, then dig around eating plants, bugs, and all sorts of tasty foods perfect for a little armored friend. So armadillos like Gaia are pretty well prepared for whatever comes their way. Their armor and burrows help keep them safe in a big world. Okay, Squeaks, it's your turn. Tell me your clues. Ooh, his animal has big eyes and a long abdomen that looks like a tail and four wings. Hmm, well, I think only insects have four wings, so it must be an insect, but a lot of them have big eyes. Ooh, a long abdomen makes me think it must be a dragonfly. 
I got it! Squeaks' animal was the common green darner dragonfly. Let's learn more about these amazing insects. If you've ever been around the water in summer, then there's a pretty good chance that you've seen a dragonfly. These bugs can be big or small, and almost any color you can think of, like red, pink, and even purple. But all dragonflies have lots of things in common, even if they look very different from one another. For example, you're right, Squeaks. Dragonflies aren't really dragons at all. They are super strong and super fast, but they won't hurt you, even though their long bodies look kind of like a stinger. Dragonflies don't sting. Dragonflies are insects, just like bees, ants, and ladybugs. Like all insects, dragonflies have six legs and three main parts to their body. A dragonfly's life starts in an egg. Some dragonflies lay their eggs in plants that grow in or near water, and others lay their eggs right in the water. About a week later, baby dragonflies are born. Young dragonflies are called nymphs, and they live in the water. Like fish and other kinds of animals that live in the water, nymphs use body parts called gills to breathe. But these gills aren't anywhere near their mouths like fish's gills. Can you guess where they are on the nymph's body? That's right, their butt. Can you imagine if we humans breathe from our butts? <laughs> I'm pretty glad we use our noses and mouths instead. Nymphs can also squirt water out of their backsides to move around quickly, like when they're trying to escape something that wants to eat them. Dragonflies stay as nymphs for about a year, although some kinds of dragonflies stay as nymphs for five years. That whole time, the nymphs get bigger and bigger, until one day, they climb out of the water. The outside of the nymph's shell splits open, and an adult dragonfly comes out. Now, take a look at the dragonfly nymph compared to the adult. The shapes of their body bodies look kind of alike, but there's one thing the adult dragonfly has that the nymph doesn't. Can you guess what it is? Exactly! Wings! The middle part of the dragonfly's body has four wings, and they're some of the strongest wings of all insects in the world. They're strong enough to carry some dragonflies the whole way across the ocean. If you've ever seen a dragonfly, you know that they can also fly very fast. They can fly at speeds of about 50 kilometers or 30 miles an hour, as fast as a car driving down the street. They can also hover, which is when they stay in one place while they're in the air. And they can even fly backwards. Dragonflies aren't only awesome flyers, though. They're also excellent hunters. They use their flying skills and great eyesight to catch and eat smaller insects, tadpoles, and even small fish. And since they need a lot of energy to fly, they need to eat a lot. If you ate as much as a dragonfly did, you'd have to eat somewhere around eight boxes of pasta every single day. Some dragonflies are pretty big, and they make kind of a buzzing sound as they fly by, which might make them seem a little scary. But there's really no reason to be afraid of these awesome insects. They won't hurt you. Unlike some other kinds of insects, dragonflies do not sting people. And that buzzing sound you might hear as a dragonfly whizzes by, that's just the sound of their awesome wings moving as they dart through the air. Dragonflies have a very important job to do. A lot of the insects that they eat are ones that people think are pests, like gnats and mosquitoes. By eating lots of these pesky insects, dragonflies help to make sure that there aren't too many of them around, and that's a good thing. So the next time you see a dragonfly, don't forget to say thanks. Okay, are you ready, Squeaks? My next animal has big feet, it gets around by hopping, and it keeps its babies in a pouch on its tummy. Ooh, that's right, marsupials do keep their babies in pouches. And big feet and hopping sound like a kangaroo to you, huh? Well, guess what? You're right. Let's take a trip to Australia to learn more about kangaroos. You know that cozy feeling when you're all cuddled up in bed wrapped in your favorite blanket? Wouldn't it be great if you could get around like that? Imagine if someone could take you to school or to your friend's house or wherever and you could just stay snuggled up. Well, some baby animals like this little guy get to do that. This tiny kangaroo and its parents are special kinds of mammals called marsupials. You probably know about some of these animals already, like the kangaroo or the koala or maybe even the wallaby. All of these animals are marsupials, and they happen to live in Australia and the nearby island of New Guinea. But there are more than 200 kinds of marsupials, and they can be found in other parts of the world too, like the Virginia opossum, which lives in North America and it's about the size of a pet cat. Or the yapak, which makes its home in Central and South America. It's one of the few marsupials that can swim. But no matter where they live, most marsupials have one thing in common. I'll give you a hint. That little kangaroo, 
was sitting in one. You got it, marsupials have pouches, but only the females do because that's where the mothers carry their tiny babies. The pouches are sort of like pockets, but more like drawstring bags, and they don't look like they do in cartoons. Marsupial babies, like most other mammals, form inside their mother's bodies at first, but they're born a lot earlier than other mammals, so they're a lot smaller. When they're born, baby marsupials are called joeys, and they still have a lot of growing to do. So they stay snug in their mother's pouch, where they can drink her milk and keep getting bigger until they're ready for life in the big wide world. But not all pouches are the same. Some pouches look like this mother kangaroo's pouch. Those kind of pouches open up near the top. But other pouches, like the ones that wombats have, open near the bottom. Either way, a marsupial's pouch has a strong muscle around the opening to keep the tiny joey inside from falling out. Now, besides having pouches, many marsupials have another thing in common. They have an excellent sense of smell, which they use to sniff out their meals. And they need their super smelling powers because most marsupials are nocturnal, which means they're awake at night, so that's when they're out looking for food. Since it's harder to see at night, their other senses, like their sense of smell and hearing, have adapted to their dark surroundings. And you you know one animal who has a nose for nightlife? Meet the bilby. Their favorite snacks are termites, and they spend most of their nights scratching around in the desert looking for them. But since it's super hard to spot these insects at night, bilbies use their extra long, powerful noses to sniff out the bugs in the dark. Then, when they find their prey, they lap them up with their really long, skinny tongues, perfect for nabbing bugs on the run. Another thing about bilbies, they have giant ears. Their big ears give off heat to help keep them cool. And they can also pick up sounds from miles away so they can hear predators that they couldn't spot in the dark. If they hear or smell trouble coming, bilbies scurry back into their deep burrows, the dens that they dig underground. Kind of like our fort. From raising their babies in warm, cozy pouches to having super senses of smell and hearing, I think you'll agree marsupials are amazing animals. All right, Squeaks, let's hear your last animal. Hmm, your animal is pretty small. And it has a long tail that looks like a worm, just like the armadillo, huh? Oh, and it's also the best, coolest, and cutest animal there is. Hmm, is it a llama? <laughs> oh, okay, I know. It's an alligator, isn't it? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Squeaks. I know what it is. It's a rat, just like you. <laughs> and I agree, they are the cutest, coolest, and best animals around. Let's learn more about why that is. Today is a day that Squeaks has been looking forward to for a long time. That's because today we're going to learn all about rats. When you think of rats, you might think of animals that live in creepy places like empty buildings or dark alleys or even sewers. But rats make their homes in lots of places, from deep underground to high up in trees. In fact, a lot of what people think they know about rats isn't true at all. So Squeaks and I thought it would be fun to play a little game. I'll say something about rats, and then you guess whether that sentence is true or false. Then Squeaks can tell us the right answer. You ready? Let's play. True or false, rats are dirty animals. What do you think? False. Rats are actually very clean. Rats lick their fur to keep it clean. They also lick their paws and then use them to clean their faces and whiskers. When animals clean themselves like this, it's called grooming, and rats groom a lot. They sometimes clean themselves even more than cats do. People often think rats are dirty because some rats can carry diseases that make us sick. So while a rat isn't dirty, if you see a rat running around where you live or think there might be one, you should leave it alone and tell a grown up. Okay, let's try another one. True or false, rats like to swim. Hmm, that's a tough one. This one is definitely true. Rats are really good swimmers. Scientists have learned that rats can tread water or swim in one place for up to three whole days without a break. That's awesome. They're good at swimming long distances too. Rats can swim almost a kilometer without stopping and they can hold their breath for about three minutes. That's way more than you could. Okay. Let's try another one. True or false, rats have excellent eyesight. Do you know? This one is false. Rats can't see very well at all, but they make up for it using their other senses to stay away from predators, to find food, and to find their way around. Take, for example, a rat's sense of smell. A rat's nose is so sensitive that it can learn about another rat just by smelling it, like whether it's sick or not. Rats have even been known to smell each other's breath 
to see what they've been eating. That way, if a rat smells that smell again, it knows that whatever's making that smell is good to eat. A rat's hearing is also excellent. Try this. Hold your hand in front of your face and gently rub your pointer and thumb together. Can you hear anything? A rat can. Noises that we can't hear or can't hear very well can sound perfectly clear to a rat. Okay, here's another good one. True or false, rats can chew through cement. Whoa, now that sounds extraordinary. Do you think it's true or false? Believe it or not, this one is true. A rat's mouth has everything it needs to chew through some really hard stuff. Rats belong to a group of animals called rodents. Rodents use their incisors, or their front teeth, to bite. And like all rodents, a rat's incisors never stop growing. Rats need to chew on things to keep them from getting too long. So rats chew and chew and chew a lot. The fronts of a rat's incisors are harder than your teeth. They're even harder than some metals like copper and iron. But these extra hard teeth are only one thing that makes a rat a champion chewer. Put your fingers on either side of your face, just in front of your ears and below your cheekbones. Now open and close your mouth. Can you feel those muscles move? These muscles move your jaw, the bottom part of your mouth. Rats have special jaw muscles that help them bite, and they can bite hard. Rats can bite down harder than a great white shark. So between their strong jaw muscles and hard teeth, rats can chew through wood, metal, plastic, and yes, even cement. All right, let's try one more. True or false, rats are not very smart. Of course, Squeaks, this one is definitely false. Rats are pretty clever. They can learn very quickly, sometimes even faster than people can. They're also great at remembering things, and they can solve problems, like how to get where they want to go. Rats aren't only smart, they're also kind to each other. Rats have been known to share food with other rats, and have even been known to figure out how to open another rat's cage to set them free. So I'm glad my best friend is a rat. Okay, well, that's the end of the game. That was so much fun. What's that, Squeaks? Who won? Let's see. Oh, look at that. We tied. Great job, buddy. Thanks for hanging out with us. We hope you liked our game. Maybe you can play, too. If you want to keep learning and having fun with me, Squeaks, Mr. Brown, and all our other friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here at the fort. <laughs>